nine out of 10 people are saying that they're, uh, you know, comfortable with a roof over their head. So, you know, as long as that doesn't change, Toronto real estate's going to be in demand. I think so. Hard, hard to put a, a hole in that theory. Yeah. So reopening Canada, Toronto's real estate industry wants to boom again. So what does that I, mean? Do I speak? Do I speak for the industry? <laughs> I think I think you have a voice. What it is is just uh, you know we've got this pent up demand, right? So we had uh, 2017. We had this like incredible market. Um, we had uh, a, a, a government intervention April 21st, 2017, where everyone just kind of su- sunk back and was like, oh, like. We better not. We better not get out of hand here because it was literally uh, absolute mayhem. There was there was nothing made sense whatsoever. People were willing to do whatever it took to win the property, not just buy the property. And so then over the next two years until 2019, everyone was just nervous. They were scared. They said, you know what? Oh, real estate went down. It's going to crash. They had all these theories about what it was, but really we saw prices continue to climb and we saw prices, you know, not maybe reach uh, the certain uh, pinnacle that they had in, in, in some areas. And we ha- we saw a decrease in prices that still haven't really come back, but most of the areas, the average, like the core properties started to see this in- increase in prices again, late 2019. So then people in like December, January started to uh, really start coming out. And then we had this lack of uh, inventory. I mean, everybody had homes. We were seeing a lot of older people who were decide like baby boomers and stuff like that, who were deci- deciding to stay in their homes. Um, they weren't looking at selling because there really wasn't a cheaper option. You know, it's like, I own a $1.5 million house. I want to get a bungalow or, you know, something smaller, but it's 1.3. So like, why am I going to go and, and spend all that money with real estate fees and land transfer tax and everything else? to not free up any equity and then be in a smaller house. Like it didn't, it doesn't really make sense. So we had a lot of people who just weren't putting their houses on the market, contributing to the low inventory. And we started to see the same uh, beginning of, of a, of a boom in 2020 where January and February sales, like we were getting like 200 showings on some of our listings, selling hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking. It was like, okay, like this is this reminds me of 2017. So I'm telling everybody this isn't gonna last. I didn't know what was gonna stop it, but I said nothing like this can last forever. So we're, we were getting houses on the market and everything else. And uh, sure enough, March 17th came, uh, state of emergency, took the window to the market. We saw uh, prices go down in some areas. We saw all sorts of changes happen. Uh, but we know that all those people. So when I had 22 offers in February, 21 people didn't get a house. Where are those 21 people? They're still out there. Yeah. Right. So we know that there's this demand that, that you just just open the gates and let's go. And I think that is really um, a part of the story. And I don't know how large a part of the story, because that is the low rise residential market story mm-hmm. from 2017 up until now. But if you look at the condo market, which is extraordinarily different than the housing market, like that whole time, None of those government uh, uh, policy interference made a dent in 2017. Maybe there was a pause for four weeks as people, you know, redid their their calculations and added 15 percent for a buyer's tax, uh, uh, a foreign buyer's tax in or, or whatever else they had to figure out. It just became another line item. And all of that got absorbed. And the condo market was so constrained by supply and had such a huge demand that those prices are so insane and and holding steady so i now i'm starting to see releases starting to open up again and 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 new properties launch and you've got stuff uh, i think it's called 28 eastern altera is the developer uh, that just came out and it's like 1250 a square foot on the eastern tip of downtown toronto 1250 opening plus parking may have included a locker i don't remember but like the pricing is crazy yep. even, even more midtown like you're young young in lawrence young in eglinton condos forest hill 1500 1800 a square foot it's like it's crazy and now they're starting to release again uh, initially people were le- releasing in the outskirts like townhouse projects and singles new stuff but new mm-hmm. new, new new houses i don't think they've been struggling for a while but like 
you, it, it, what, what I find so interesting, and we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, it's like this segmentation or like the, this division of markets in the city right now. It's, it, mm-hmm. it, it's so, because I don't think condos are selling right now and houses are going like crazy, right? Ha- condos are selling a little bit and they're starting to gain some momentum again, but like there's, they got hit real hard where even though houses got hit hard, like our, I think in the condo market, the demand supply thing got thrown way out of balance because all the foreign investors disappeared and everybody just shut down completely. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely saw the condo market start to get um, uh, a little bit oversaturated with listings. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what those numbers are for June. Um, I don't have, I had some mid-June numbers, but I don't have anything um, at the end of June that I've seen. So we're going to start to, we're probably going to see that Monday or Tuesday from the Toronto Real Estate Board. Um, I, I heard something I know that, that it's the- like up like a crazy number year over year from last year in June. Uh, certain areas in, in June... Uh, are an increase, but not most, not most. There's some areas. But still all trending up. Everything's uh, from year over year, no, but like seasonally adjusted compared to May, yes, of course. I mean, we were 60%, uh, you know, down year over year in May. So we're, we're going to have uh, definitely some great numbers coming out for June. And that's what we're seeing. And, and that's great. And the Toronto Real Estate Board is going to love to promote that. You're going to see it on every news outlet uh, uh, possible yeah. showing what those numbers are going to be. So that's great. My...